Blessings, everyone. Okay, so here what we're looking at is another X. Okay, and this X is a little different. This X has a hook in it. Again, we're looking at another hook. And when we're looking at hooks here, I really believe that this is a lot to do also um, with what is happening here in the with the bloodline. Okay, there's a connection with the bloodline. The military order of the Knights Templar, hooked X, hooked X represents Mary Magdalene. Now Mary Magdalene also um, is has everything to do with the bloodlines, right? So I thought to myself, I'm going, well, bloodlines and the hook within that, that, that X. And then I remembered Jonathan Kleck, who put the X up towards him. And then the X, when he, you know, everything was to do with this, this hooked X. And so I went back to, to look at that again, the wolf's cross. And I was really surprised because of the connection here. And there was something that I read out, and I think it's very important that people go over and really take heed to what is being said, because I know now that I am a little bit more closer. I'm paying attention on, on what is being said and presented here. Now, this hooked X, okay, again, this is Mary Magdalene, and this is about the bloodline. You go to the wolf cross, and the cro this is about purification of the blood and how they do that is they purge you from your faith and from your beliefs okay this is how they do it they purge you and then the other day I read this Hosea 4 2 by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery they break out and blood toucheth blood now the video that I did my last video, without knowing any of this, I knew that there was something to do with the exes. There was something to do with Mary. But now I realize it wasn't the Mary, the Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, our Savior. But it was everything to do, I think, with Mary Magdalene. And that we need to be looking at what is being said here by Jonathan Cleck. Okay. So I'm just going to switch over to his video right now. So again, what we're looking at here that he wears very proudly as authority and has on his vehicle and his house, um, everywhere, you will see this X, okay? So, and this means the purification of the blood and the purging of your faith and the purging of your belief. And this is what he is doing, okay? This is what he is purging you of. So now here, again, we've got the Swiss cross, okay? This has a lot to do with the Knights Templars, the Nazis, all right? All the money, all the gold, everything in the, in the, in the wars, everything going to Sweden, Switzerland, um, the banks, all of it, Knight Templars, the Nazis, all right? It all, it's all under one umbrella for one cause, and that is just the pure evil. And that is to purge us from our faith and from our belief, to break us down, that there will be nothing left on earth, okay, of belief or faith. And then here you have the, you know, the two crosses. So now we have, again, I'm, you know, to add Mary Magdalene's cross to this, as far as the bloodlines, we're starting to see a bigger picture. And the importance of the blood. Okay, so here he's at the Templar's Commandery, okay? The House of the Sun, weird statues, okay? Two guys chasing muddy here. It's, it's actually a very good video. It's something to see, okay? So here in the background, you see a circle within a circle, all right? So here we go. Goose, goose skin here, I tell you, man. I wouldn't like to be walking or strolling around here tonight. I don't like being, not being one of them. 
and there you go. Now, from what I understand and what I've read in my studies, um, Mary Magdalene um, preached in caves, and they called it a holy cave concerning her because she apparently, I think there was a whole province that she had converted into Christianity and it was all, and it was through her doing this in a cave. And this is the symbology of Mary Magdalene right here. So this is not the Virgin Mary. This is not the mother of our Lord, our Savior. deception. Again, just a little clip. This is not a halo. This is the sun and we have the Knights Templar's cross on her chest. This is Mary Magdalene. Here I, I remembered something. Um, I received a comment from a sister who had told me that she was able to escape from, from her uh, bondage, from uh, Judaism, no, not Judaism, sorry. Um, I, think, I think she said Jesuit, okay, Jesuit, yes, sorry. And she gave me a little bit of an idea of the teachings of the Jesuits and about the thinking and, and knowing of what God thinks. And I thought, wow, like that, wow, you know. And again, it was the power that was being used in order to get her out of there. This was not of her own doing. Who was there to do that when there was nobody else around asking the same questions that she was? So you know that this is through the power and the movement that, that we were able to move through the Holy Spirit. This is how his children move, okay? It is not by putting two numbers together, adding it, putting a name there, and then saying, okay, by Tuesday, I gotta get out of here because so-and-so is gonna come over or this is gonna happen, so I better get out of the neighborhood. It's ridiculous. You're not walking in your faith the way you do the te with the teachings of Jonathan Clegg. That is not walking in your faith. That is walking in the world, in this world. And as you can see, this world loves him. As you can see that he loves to call himself the vampire, okay? Can you imagine all those prayers that go to this man? And there's only about 130, six plus here on YouTube, but there's more on Facebook and Twitter and whatever else he has, his radio station, you know. So, I mean, you can just imagine the energy that's going and lifting this man up. Not good. So I'm going to go over to a brother's and uh, shortly, hopefully, when I get through this, and I want to show you what it is, the power of prayer and what it does to the person and to the body and what it looks like. So here, um, again, I just wanted to show... Uh, our sister here, just a little bit about the uh, the Jesuit. Um, I just remembered this after your your comment, so I just thought I'd throw this in. The Jesuit uh, church. It looks like a barrack. So in those times, you know, the Thirty Year War, sixteen eighteen to sixteen forty eight, these were the barracks. It was full of Swiss mercenaries, you know, where they were like. And I just wanted to show here the Swiss cross. Here we got, it's huge. And what I didn't notice, and now that I've come back to it, you could notice this huge X, okay? And again, now we know what this represents, and this represents Mary Magdalene. And this is your, your cross, your hooked cross. There's a better shot of it here somewhere. There you go, the hooked cross. And then you've got the colors of the rainbow, which is demonic, okay? Your cross and Jesuit. I just thought I would, you know, kind of throw that in there. And last but not least, I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, when he's concerned about the suit and he puts on the suit of a lawyer and now he thinks that people would start taking him serious, thinking that this is his covering. Um, really, in reality, what this man does is he wears the, the garment of the enemy all the time, all the time. If this man was on, on the side of the road and, and I, I, I looked at him, 
and saw the outfits that he was wearing or the colors that he was wearing, believe me, I'd keep on walking. I would not think that this man by any means would have, would have been godly, but against God. If I was to see him on the street with his coat, with his garments. So here again, what are we looking at? The, what are we looking at here? We looking at the colors, the pink and the red. What does this represent? The blood of the saints, the blood of the innocent, the blood of those children. I was watching um, an old movie, Little House on the Prairie, and the colors that came out every time there was a child involved. And the father came around the corner and he was wearing pink as a pink pajama underwear kind of thing. And the little boy came around the tree and he was wearing red, red overalls, red pajamas. And this was the color, the red and the pink. So we know that this is the blood of the saints and of the children. And yet you have no shame to even put this up. No, this is, you know, um, I was just laying there the other, just not too long ago, and this is what came to me when, and then when I saw this, it was very fitting. So I'm just going to read it out. I wasn't, but I'm going to. I sit here dressed as the enemy and tell you I'm not, and yet you believe. What's it called? Case closed. The jury can now make its decision. What spirit does this come from? Because if it comes from heaven, it is first pure, peaceful, entreating. The opposite of what I'm seeing here. What I'm looking at here is the death of the saints and what that man did when he did his drop and came out of that plane, he celebrated celebrated the fall of man, the purification of the blood by pur pur purging them from their faith and purging them from their belief. And here, you've got this right in front of you, the colors of war, the garment of the enemy. I sit here dressed as the enemy and tell you I'm not and yet you believe. I'm gonna take the very simple example that was used the night the Lord saved me, the night I got saved, and I'm gonna show you truth. I'm going to enlarge this. That image right there is an image of the virgin. Is that the truth? Well, the Bible says, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down. So let's apply the truth of the Word of God to that. And I'm going to take this image of the Virgin and turn it upside down. Now you've seen the complete truth. Because if you never knew that there was a sheep that the Virgin makes when you turn it upside down, you only saw part of reality. The reality is it's not just an image of the Virgin, is it? The reality is, it's the virgin one way, and it's a dead sheep the other way. So if you didn't know that, were you living in reality? The fall of man, purification of the blood, purging you from your faith and belief. 
you decide.